Hello my friends, Paul here in the Rojovi Music Workshop and welcome to my next project um, which is another cigar box guitar. Um, so at the end of the last series I finished this one all in black uh, with black hardware um, and when I'd set it up um, it wasn't perfect but it, it, it was good um, but I have done one little job off camera because I wasn't entirely happy with it. Basically the problem was, um, the, you see the, the gap at the edge of the fretboard from the strings, it was fine most of the way down. But then when I got to uh, this end, the, the treble string, the treble string was too close to the edge. Um, and I could see that the middle string wasn't lining up perfectly with the fret dot markers in the middle. So what I did was uh, I loosened off all the strings. I took the bridge off and um, I, I, <clears throat> I scooted it across this way a little bit, just literally a couple of millimetres. Made sure everything all lined up and uh, then re-drilled the holes. I, I plugged the original holes in. Uh, re-drilled the holes and, and just screwed it back down. So, you know, you you really can't see um, the, the difference, where am I? Uh, you know, from, from here to here with the, the bridge. It is slightly over to one side, but it means that the strings uh, are the same gap all the way up the fretboard. It means that the middle string lines up with the middle uh, of the fretboard through the, the fret dot markers. <coughs> And the strings even sit over the sound hole, pretty much in the middle too. Um, it wasn't quite right before. So now I've done that, it's much better. <clears throat> and um, I, I tweaked, tweaked the, um, the string action a little bit to, to remove any remaining buzzing. And now it's all good. So that one is completed, completely finished. Might need a little bit more of a clean up again, but other than that, it's done. So, um, at the end of the, uh, that, that series of, of doing that one, um, I mentioned that my next one I'm going to do slightly differently. So, um, because a lot, a lot of the time seems to be taking up, taken up uh, making the neck and the fretboard, what I've gone with this time is a neck plank. Uh, so this is actually um, an electric guitar neck, um, but it, it just suited my purposes uh, better than, than uh, some of the other ones I was finding. Now, obviously it's got you know an uncut headstock. It's called a paddle for some reason. And the thing is, you could you could uh, you know row a canoe canoe with this thing. I mean. I've got pretty big hands. <laughs> that thing is enormous. Okay, which, which is good because it gives me plenty of uh, room to to um, you know cut out the shape of the headstock. Uh, and on that note, I, I printed off the lights blinking out a bit. Uh, I printed off um, a, a headstock template, and if you see, I've, I've actually got two on there. Um, I've got where are we? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm upside down. There we go. I've got a left and a right. Now, obviously, I'm doing it right-handed, so I'll be using the, the right-hand uh, headstock template. So all I do is just print it out on a piece of paper, cut it out, and then stick it on, on the headstock where I want it, uh, and then cut around it. Uh, so... I've already cut off the end of the, uh, the neck underneath the fretboard and I've flattened uh, this back piece off because I'm going to need to make a heel and the, the, this part of the, the back of the neck was slightly radiused so I needed it flat so I've sanded that flat on my uh, bench disc sander and as I said I've removed um, a portion of the, um, the neck so that the fretboard will sit over the top of the body. Um, now, you know, buying this neck blank has given me 
quite a few advantages. Okay, the neck and the fretboard are made. I don't have to do that. I've just got to, you know, cut out the shape of the headstock, and I will be narrowing this this uh, whole neck as well, which I, I'm a little bit leery to do, to be honest, because I mean this wasn't re really all that expensive, but it's 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 nice, and uh, I'm I'm a bit disappointed that I've got to cut it down really. But, but I do have to because, um, you know, the spacing for a three string, I mean, you're going to have gaps like half an inch wide either side before you get to, to the string, at, at, you know, at this end of the fretboard. So I have got to cut it down. And obviously another advantage is it comes with a fitted truss rod. And um, I, I know that the, the truss rod doesn't go right the way to the end of the, the neck itself. So I wasn't worried about cutting into the truss rod. Um, when I came to do this, because I've, I've done it at the uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, the 18th fret, and that's usually where you get the join of a neck on, onto a guitar body, you, usually, not always, but usually around the 18th fret. So I, I knew that the um, truss rod didn't come to the end, um, I, I know that, you know, anyway, but I did get pretty close. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's literally, um, you can see the hole in the end there, you're not going to be able to see it, you just see a little bit of white that side, that's the end of the truss rod, actually it's the glue holding the end of the truss rod in. So I, I was about, I guess about three eighths of an inch away from the end of the truss rod, so it was close, but I, I knew what I was doing. <laughs> and, and as I said, you know, the, the truss rod is, is a huge advantage. Um, so, as I said, I've cut the end off of here so that the uh, fretboard overlaps the body. Coming to the body, <coughs> I've got this. Um, so it's just um, a wooden box, a solid wooden box. And, and I, it, was, it was taller and, and I've cut it down um, and smoothed off the edges there. And I've sanded all this side off, which is, you know, made it nice and smooth. Um, and what was I going to say? So, if I compare this to the, the previous cigar box guitar, let me just hold it back a bit, uh, you can see that this one is longer and a little bit narrower. Um, it's, it's quite a bit longer, but that's good because, you know, with these ones I've ended up with a bridge quite, quite far down the body. With this one I won't have that problem. Um, so... You know, this, this is quite a chunky box. Um, I mean, you can see that the, the sides, what are they, half an inch, maybe a bit more, half an inch thick. Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure uh, this is as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this the top. Now, it, it is way too thick for that, really. Um, you know, you need your, the top of the guitar three millimetres thick, so they're all thereabouts, a little bit more, a little bit less. This is going to be about half an inch. <laughs> um, but I'm going to leave the back open. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's, it's going to work fine like that. It, it will, you know, you will get some decent sound out of it. It's not going to resonate as such. I mean, that's, you know, that's a solid chunk of wood right there. Um, but I, I used to have another instrument before, Japanese sanchin, which was the same kind of thing. It, it was, wasn't a box like this, but it was a wooden bowl. And that was about the same thickness around the, the sides. I think that the top was, was thinner, but it had that same, that kind of sound when, when you did that to it. But that sound, I mean, and that had nylon strings and that sounded just fine. That sounded really good. Um, so I'm pretty sure this is going to work okay. So as I said, this is going to be the top and I'm going to leave the back open. <clears throat> now, if it doesn't sound great, then what I will do is I will put a sound hole in here and I'll put a back on. This, you know, both jobs are really simple. So, um, but I'm going to try it open at first, you know, have this at the top and have the back open and it should be absolutely fine, especially with steel strings, um, it, it should be fine. So, um, so, you know, I've done a little bit of preparation off camera before I started, you know, filming this, but not that much really. I mean, this, this box, as I said, it was 
taller and I've just I've cut it down to a, you know the kind of thickness that I want or the, the depth that I want and sanded all of this this edge nice and smooth um, this this was the bottom of the box and it had like rubber padded feet on there and when I pulled those off you know it left glue residue in there with little divots and everything so I've sanded the whole thing back to bare wood and it's nice and flat and smooth it's not had a final sanding yet <clears throat> um, the sides I'm going to leave exactly as they are um, it's quite nice patterning on this actually and even the inside of the box has been uh, stained as well so apart from cleaning that I'm not going to do anything more to that so um, let me just put, put this one back up so this this project isn't going to take so long because I don't have to uh, you know, make and shape and profile and sand and smooth the, the neck because it, it's it's already done. I'm using a blank. Um, but like I said, I am going to be narrowing it. Now, with the previous uh, cigar box guitar, I made the neck straight all the way down, and that was part of the problem when I had that um, the issue with the string spacing. It's just a little bit too narrow, to be honest. So, I am going to uh, leave a taper in this one, albeit I'm going to cut the whole thing down narrower. I am going to leave um, a taper in this, because, I don't know how well you can see that, but it, the, the taper is very subtle, quite gradual. Um, now, I may or may not go with the same angle, um, but, but narrower. I'm, I'm not sure yet. Um, I've been doing some measuring up with the, the hardware and the, and the, um, the, the width of the headstock. <coughs> uh, incidentally, this one is going all gold hardware. All gold. And on that note, actually, um, I've also got uh, a set of gold frets in this bag. Uh, let me just grab those quickly out of the bag. Um, so I want the whole thing to be, you know, all gold hardware. The previous one was all black. The one before that, um, if any of you remember seeing that one, the kind of gothic style one with the spikes on it and spiders and all sorts of things, um, that one was all silver hardware. And, uh, you know, I'll put a few little ornaments on it as well. Um, so that one was all silver. Number two was all black. This one's going to be all gold. So the, the frets that I have... Uh, we've got some nice gold frets, Where am I? <laughs> um, but the, the downside is the, these are a little bit, quite a bit actually, smaller than the frets in this neck. Um, I didn't actually think about it when I bought this neck because it comes obviously with all the frets in it. Um, I could leave those in there. Or, I, I really do want to go to, to these gold ones, so that all of the hardware on this is gold, and it's going to look really nice. Um, but, if, you know, if I take these frets out, <coughs> which I'll do carefully anyway, there is always a chance that you can tear a little bit of the wood out either side of the slot. Now, with these, uh, with these gold frets uh, being, you really can't see that, but they are considerably smaller than the frets in there right now. Um, if, if I tear out too much wood, when I put those new gold frets in, it's not going to cover up all the marks. So I'm not sure. Um, if, I, if it does work out OK, uh, and I do end up changing them all, what I will do first is I will take all of these frets out before I cut this neck down, you know, the, the width. Um, because, I mean, I have done it before, um, I've cut fretboards and, and necks with the frets in there because they're, they're not steel so they're not going to you know, damage my bandsaw but potentially they could um, so if I uh, find that I am going to change all the frets then I'll take all of these out before um, I cut the neck down so I think the first thing I need to do really is check if that's uh, a viable option about changing these frets so um, I'm going to take, take out the, the last fret very carefully and just see if, um, 
you know, putting these new ones in is going to be viable. If not, I will leave them in and I will cut it as it is. Just, just be very careful because, um, you know, it can, if you're not careful, it can damage your, your um, bandsaw blade. can also damage the, the guitar neck itself. So I've got to be careful. So let me just get my new fret pullers. And how are we doing for time? Okay. Right, so let me just turn the camera around and angle it down so you can see what I'm doing. How's that? Let's have a look at that. That's not too bad. Let me zoom in. Okay. The light's not great. But, uh, so with my, with my fret pullers, can you see that okay? Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to very carefully, again, this is the wrong way around for me, but this is so that you can, you can see what I'm doing. Uh, very carefully pull out the last fret. As soon as I've cleaned, cleaned these up a bit, just bear with me a second. Somehow they've got glue on them. Okay, so let's just, uh, actually, before I start, um, I want to wet, wet the fretboard down a bit. Just a little bit of mildly soapy water. Not too much. Um, just get a paintbrush and uh, just kind of dab that water in a bit. So putting water on the fretboard before you before you start to pull the frets, it's, it softens the wood slightly and reduces the risk of uh, wood tear out. I don't want to leave too much water on there, so I'll just uh, dab a bit of that off. don't want too much on there. Okay. Right, so let's give that a try. <coughs> Okay, so I'll just gently ease that fret out. It seems to be moving already, so that's a bit of a help. Wow, well, that came out far too easy. <laughs> Absolutely zero um, tear out on the wood, which is good. Um, let me just find a toothpick. There seems to be a little bit of something just stuck in the end of there. Find that end. So I think it's glue actually. I think the manufacturer probably put a, a drop of glue in the end of each fret. But that came out. Far too easy. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good sign or not. <laughs> um, get one of my single edge razor blades and just uh, pop that bit of glue out the end. This is going to be in the way. <clears throat> okay. Can't, can't get that. Okay, so um, let me just choose one of the, the longer frets. Should be good. Um, okay, so uh, if I do replace these, I'm obviously, like I said, I'm going to pull all the frets out first, then cut the neck down, then put these frets in after. So, but I just want to see um, how well they do go in. I'll just grab my fret hammer. Oh, should have had it ready, shouldn't I? My fret hammer. Okay. Um, I need to support. Uh, so there, there's the, the piece that I cut off the end of the, the neck. I'll just slot, slot that underneath just to support it. So it's not going to bounce around while I put that fret in. Okay, just line it up. Okay, 
seems to have gone all right. What I am noticing though is even though these new gold frets are radiused, it looks as though they might not be radiused enough. So I might need to just add to that a bit with my new fret radius gadget, fret bending gadget, curling gadget, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, so I will need to um, <clears throat> I will need to bend those frets a little bit more, but to be honest, that does look good. Yeah, they'll, de they'll definitely need to be uh, bent a bit more before I put them in. Otherwise, I think that looks quite good. I mean. I don't know how well you can see it in there, but they are quite a bit smaller than the original frets. But what about height? Um, yeah, I think a little bit lower too. That's not a problem, to be honest. It won't be a problem at all. Um, I mean, you know, you can't just change some of the frets and leave, leave some of the originals. You'd have to change all of them. But I'm quite happy with that. So I we'll just want to see how well that will come back out. And the fact that it's fairly tight is good. Okay, so once again, uh, zero tear out on the wood. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm quite happy with that. Very pleased actually. Um, so I'm going to pull all of these frets out and eventually I'll replace them with the gold one. So I'm just going to show you a couple more of the frets, uh, pulling the frets out. Um, but I'm not going to film all of it because it's, it's a fairly lengthy process. So um, I think rather than spraying the water directly onto the um, to the fretboard, I'm going to find my elusive paintbrush. There, no, that's not the one. Where's my paintbrush gone? Yeah, we get another one. I don't care. <laughs> um, so I'll just spray the water onto the paintbrush first, and just slide that back a bit. Literally paint the water onto the fretboard either side of the fret. I'll do a couple of them. Um, definitely don't want too much water on here. Okay, that looks good. So once again with my fret pullers. Um, tend to start at one end, just get it lifting slightly and just work along. So you, you want the, the jaws of the fret puller to, to slide underneath the fret and, and because uh, they're smooth here, they're not going to damage the fretboard. I mean these are just pinches really, but uh, they're sold as fret pullers. So this is not a job you want to rush. Um, so yeah, as, as the jaws go underneath the fret, because the bottom of that is flat, it tends to keep the wood fibers down and stops it from splitting out. In theory. Still got to be very careful. Okay, looks good. So I'm just rocking backwards and forwards slightly just to help it to lift up, break it free from, from its grip. But as I said, I'm not going to rush it. This is a job, this, is, this could take me, you know, an hour or so. But I'd rather take my time, do it properly, and end up with a undamaged fretboard ultimate goal. There we go, it's popping out now. And because th this end of the fretboard, the frets are very close together, so it's a little bit tricky getting in there, but uh, the other thing is the, um, the curve here allows you to get between the tight frets without 
too much trouble. But as I get further towards the headstock end, it will just become easier. This one's putting up a little bit of a fight, so I'm not going to force it. I'm just going to let it take its time. Okay, well that's three of them out. Um, now, again, I'm not sure how well you see, you'll see this, but uh, the, first, the first two came out nice and clean. The third one, there is a very, very tiny, tiny couple of chips. I think you can just about see one there. 